Hey guys, we're here at this brand spanking new Duquesne. Oh, look at this by Duquesne. Clean coils using water only. So, you can tell that everything's new, the pad, you can see the lumber, the building. It's not new construction, but it's a total remodel. The guy that put this in, uh, he, they tried to call him for a no cooling call because it's it hasn't been cooling very well on a hot day when it's real hot. And it's about 95 out here today. And if I'm not mistaken, well, I know I came a couple days ago and we had a, uh, a TXV that was acting up. Looks like they used that Armaflex glue. I explained to the customer how a TXV works and how a piston works. I told him that normally on something like this, I would just go back with a piston, but because the unit is absolutely brand new, I told him it would probably be you know, best to go back with the TXV. But when I explained to him how a TXV works versus how a piston works, he said he didn't really give a shit about the efficiency so much, he just wanted something reliable. And because a piston doesn't have any moving parts and a valve does, he told me to put a piston. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take out the valve. It's an Armstrong air handler. And if you're wondering why I'm sanding that pipe, it's because I've went to the uh, wireless probes here on the uh, S-Man. And you have to have clean copper or these things will not make a connection. All right. All right, 410A. And you can see there the superheat's high. I didn't hook up the high side because I'm just getting ready to pump it down. Uh, the subcooling is at the manufacturer's specifications. So that's why I'm, I'm, I recommended getting rid of the valve. Because if I do, if I would hook up the subcooling, it would be at about 10. And with a 33 degree superheat, line temperature is at 70 something degrees. It's just not keeping up on a hot day. So we're going to pump this down and replace the. Uh, the only reason I put the pipe clamp on here is just to show y'all the, the superheat. That that superheat is, you know, it, that's high for a working TXV. So I'm going to prop y'all up here. Hopefully y'all can still see what's going on. We're going to pump it down. Go inside. Unbolt the valve. And put in a piston. This is a three-ton machine with a 7 8 valve. Uh, ICP likes to do that too. And see, you probably see me, If y'all, I hope y'all can see what's going on, but you probably see I'm closing the suction valve first. I'm not closing it all the way. I'm just closing it about halfway to get a head start because the suction valves are so long-winded, you know, that it's hard to close them without having to cut the unit off before it pumps all the way down or without pumping it into a negative, which you don't wanna, you don't wanna pump it down into a vacuum. You always wanna leave a little bit of pressure and you can just bleed that out with your hose. I, I mean, a one or two PSI is not gonna hurt anything. I now have the liquid side completely closed off and you can see, well, I hope y'all can, that it is pumping down. Hopefully, it'll pump down all the way. 
can hear the compressor getting noisy. It may kick in, it, the, the relief valve may open. It may not. We're down to 19 PSI and it hasn't opened yet. It looks like it's gonna pump it down all the way. All right, we got about five, six, five, four, three, two, Getting down the one and I'm going to shut it off. Okay, so I shut it off with one PSI left. By the time I got the valve closed, hopefully, yeah, it's at 11 PSI. So, you know, you can say what you want, but we'll take that hose right there and just let the rest of that bleed off. That's not gonna hurt anything. Um, I'm probably not gonna change the filter dryer. You can call me a hack for that if you want to, but I am not, I mean, I'm not opening up, I mean, I'm opening the system, but it's it's so brief what I'm doing. It's not like I'm doing a coil replacement or a compressor replacement. So I know you guys are gonna go crazy in the comments and there's no telling what y'all are gonna say about not doing that, but you know, um, I really don't care, so have at it. But now we'll move inside to uh, go get the valve out and put the piston in. All right, so here's what we're working with, an Armstrong air handler. A lot of people are interested in model and serial numbers. So there it is. They built this closet way too small for this unit. This is a Pretty good size three ton and the drain. Look, look at this trap they put. What a joke of a trap, man. I mean, they, this closet should have been built much bigger. Or they should have used a smaller unit, man. This thing is huge for a three ton. My three tons are not nearly this big. All right, so I'm gonna start taking the bottom door off and uh, let me kill these breakers up here. Okay, it's just one breaker. This is actually a construction company's office. And uh, the guy that put the unit in, they can't get, I don't know if I mentioned that already, but they can't get a hold of him. Uh, they hired him to do the install and he did it. And now they can't get a hold of him to service it. So, but that's okay. I'll gladly take over that service. Okay, guys, I'm gonna have to put y'all away. This is where it gets tricky. Uh, I actually have to bow up on the unit and pull it over just to get a drill or anything in there to get these screws off. Okay, this will be a very simple job. We unbolt it here, we move, unbolt it here. We take the valve out, we put the piston in here, squeeze everything forward, take the bulb off, take the equalization tube off, Put a Schrader, and uh, that should that should just about do it. Okay. I mean, a pretty nice air handler for service, but just huge for a three-ton, man. This is like a 21-inch air handler. My, my three tons are 17. So, let me spin that wrench the other way. Okay. So we got one loose. Get this other one before. Okay, that one's loose also. Okay, there we go. 
it's usually a good idea to hold a backup on those, but I'm pretty good on that one felt a little little different, but I I got it. But if if I if it would have gave me a little bit more trouble than that, I would have went and got a backup. So use a backup on those, on, on those equalization tubes. Let me see if I can get my drill in here to get this bulb off. Probably not. Let me get a nut driver. There we go. Right. Valve is gone. Gone. I will keep this clamp though. I look, cause this is my favorite style clamp. Them uh, copper or brass clamps that you have to put in that loop. I hate those. Gotta take the screw all the way out just to get the damn thing off. So this is my favorite style bulb clamp. You clamp it, you put the bolt here. I will be keeping this. This will save you one day. It's always good to keep uh, stuff like this. I've always kept stuff like this. Now, one thing I started doing, I got the and I got the idea from Ted Cook, and I want to make that clear because there's a lot of guys here on YouTube that say, oh, well, he, uh, he didn't even come up with that. He got that idea from another guy. And, yeah, that's what we do. We bounce things off of each other here. Ted Cook gave me the idea to start keeping ca capacitor brackets uh, off of old units. So I've started doing that, different sizes. So now what we're going to do is we're going to remove the Teflon seal so that we can put the piston in. And there it is. And... I have the piston here in my pocket. We're gonna put the piston in, just like so. And I'm going to put the new Teflon that came with the piston. Teflon seal, gasket, whatever you wanna call it. Okay, it's in. Now, we'll see about merging these two together. Just like so. Well, I say that. All right, so we're gonna put the seal there. get them lined up better all your play is right here where the piston is held they don't really give you too much slack right here because this is your actual this side is your actual liquid line so I gotta line these up really well okay that looks good just have to get it to stay so I can get the nut started. There we go. Okay, so we have a nice tight seal there. Now I'm gonna insert a core, Schrader core, here. Okay, it 
doesn't want to go in there. Some of these units give you the hardest damn time. Okay, now I got her. Okay. The core is in there nice and tight. So now what we're going to do, we're going to go outside and uh, start the vacuum. And then I'm going to bring a cap back to put on here. Make sure every, there's no leaks or anything before we button all this up. All right, so I have the vacuum set up. I finally bit the bit the bullet and got me a blue vac micron gauge. Maybe a true blue single hose kit will be next. I'm using what a lot of you guys like to call the widow maker to steal power. My pump is already turned on, obviously. Uh, open up the pump. And there we go. Turn the Bluetooth on to this thing. If I can figure out how. Okay, we're already coming down. I'm not gonna make y'all sit here and watch it. It's coming down well. All right, so I'm gonna button this up. I'm not gonna make y'all watch that. Just wanted to show everybody that I did put a brass cap over the Schrader. Cause they got some guys on here, if you don't show it on camera, they'll say, oh, I bet you he never put a cap on there. Or he never did this or he never did that. So one more time for you. There's a brass cap, everything's tight. Our microns are in the uh, high 500s. So we're doing good. I'll put the bottom door on, button this thing back up, and uh, we'll get a shot of it running and of the charge. All right, guys, the system is operational. We're calling for an 18 superheat. We have 20. I have my jug hooked up. I had to put a little squirt in there. We're almost at that 18. So... I'll probably just leave it right there. Been using Measure Quick, and what I like is the S Man 380. I don't like four port manifolds, I don't use them. But a lot of guys ask me why I don't go to the probes because I do have the wireless clamps with the manifold. I don't, there's just, I, I don't know what it is. I still like using a manifold. I don't know, call me crazy, but, but what's cool is this thing hooks to Measure Quick. I don't have the airflow probes for this, but I do have the UEI hub six. So I'm able to use this and the hub airflow probes, you can mix, you can mix your tools in measure quick and it'll still give you the reading. So a lot, but a lot of times I'll use the hub too. I like the hub better because it has a charging port on it. I think that's why I like a manifold in case I have to charge. So I do prefer the hub over the field piece because it has a, a port to charge with refrigerant if need be. Uh, so you can mix and match mix and match you can max I cannot talk today you can match or mix your tools on measure quick so I think that's pretty cool all right that, that's about 16 17 degrees of super heat I think we're gonna leave it right there hey guys real quick remember I showed y'all that earlier i just found out why it might get noisy but i want y'all to look in here that co that is an aluminum tube coil this is a linux product it's a duquesne 
That's why they don't want you putting chemicals on it. Because there's no copper in here. How about that? <laughs>